Hi everyone, my name is Michelle and I'm Mama Loves UGB here on FlossTube but also on Instagram and Etsy. And uh, this is my Flossmas advent calendar. So every day in December, uh, my Floss advent calendar, some free charts and uh, a look at a couple of past finishes of mine from, from this year. And I've also got today a finish. Hey, we've got a finish. Uh, and also a little bit more haul. And for those of you who've watched my first video, you're probably sitting there thinking, for the love of God, woman, really, more haul? Uh, but in my defence, this is my Victoria Motto uh, sampler cup threads that I get every other month. And this is actually backdated from October. So uh, it's taken quite a long time to get here because I know she's had a few problems with suppliers and, uh, and a bad ankle injury as well, I think. So we're going to get started. Uh, you might be able to hear the dog. The dog was out in the garden howling. I have no idea why. He's just taken to howling. I think there's a vixen been screaming um, in the local area the last few nights we've heard it. So he's probably gone out there to just shout at the vixen. But it's been, uh, it's been one of those days today, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, we have a two week timetable at work and then this week is week one. And there's 25 lessons in week one and I teach 23 of them. So 23 one hour lessons. And it's just been like a Gatling gun today. Boom, 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 boom. One thing after another. And I've decided the most dangerous three little words in any workplace when somebody comes up to you, could you just? No, no, I couldn't just because that's going to take me two hours. <laughs> it's ticked something off your list, but it's going to take me two hours. So um, I taught all day today and then I did a, a session on data for our PGC students that we've got in school as well. So um, that was fun. But it, yeah, it's just been one of those one of those things. No gin tonight. Um, I just thought I'd better not start. To be honest, I'm not a big drinker, despite my being sick in a bush story. From a couple of floss tubes ago. I'm not a big drinker and I've probably drunk all of 10 units maybe this year but uh, I thought today actually if I did have one chances are I'd have quite a few more and I've already had my guilty pleasure today which was a share size bar of Aero all to myself in the car on the way home. It has been one of those days. So I'm going to show you my finish first of all and hotly anticipated including by me is Maria Dale. Now, let me just put her there. Oh, there we go. There is Maria Dale. Oh, completely finished off. I loved stitching Maria Dale. Absolutely loved it. It's such a, a nice sample. It's bigger than I thought it was going to be. I did it on 32 count because I really wanted that kind of density of the stitch that you get with two threads. I did try it with one on 36 count and one on 40 count and neither quite sort of hit the spot to get that real density dark dark colour that I've seen in the, the original sampler. So this is Maria Dale. She is only in the first edition of the Sampler and Antique Needlework Quarterly magazine. She's not reproduced anywhere else. And this is, um, I found her in the CD-ROM that I was telling you about in, my, in some of my earlier floss tubes, which I think, let me just put this down, it's heavy, um, have been really, really popular. I've seen lots of floss tubers mention that CD since, and lots of people starting various different uh, charts from it. If you haven't seen it, um, I'll put a picture of it up here. Go and seek it out. The, for the price, it's amazing. So you get every issue of Sampler and Antique Needlework Quarterly magazine on CD-ROM all in PDF format so you can just download and stitch to your heart's content. So back to Maria. Maria is, as I said, on 32 count old stationery by Seraphim Fabrics. And I love this fabric, really, really nice. So much so that I know I'm only gonna have a little bit left at the bottom, but I'm gonna be saving that for something else. And she was stitched with, and I brought it this time because I always get it wrong, blue spruce by Gentle Art. Now she took a superb amount of floss, really, really superb amount of floss. It's gotta be five or six skeins for that. So I know it's two over two on 32 count and the stitching is pretty, pretty dense. That board is actually quite dense. But I really, really enjoyed it and I can't wait to get her 
get her framed. So she's going to have to go to the framers, I think, because it's not a standard size and it's not something that I've got um, in a charity shop find. So, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to that. And I'm so pleased that I've finished her. So she was part of my Can I Finish It 2020 challenge that Creatively Yours Debbie is doing. And I sort of hopped on the bandwagon and sort of used it to give me some, some motivation. So I decided that I was going to finish Maria Dale and I finished her. So happy with that. Okay, so, 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 so. So a button on your head, as my mum says. Here's my advent calendar threads that I've already started. So I am going to open day number three. And I still haven't turned the lights on. I'm going to have to get my daughter to do it. I'm going to have to tell her, when Mama comes home, you, you nip upstairs and you turn the lights on. Because I can't be trusted. So, here's number three. Ooh. Another one on those sort of greeny gold spectrum. Ooh, now this is a nice one. This one is called Grecian Gold. Now, Grecian Gold, I know, appears in quite a lot of charts and when I asked the patchwork rabbit to put together this thread, uh, boom words floss or thread advent calendar not both um, I said can you pick things that are not necessarily the most common ones but ones that crop up in charts um, I do a lot of color conversions anyway so it's not too too much of a problem but it's just nice to have ones when you get a chart out you think oh yeah I've got that so that's Grecian gold so it's gonna go on my thread ring there so I am getting some really nice autumnal colours there and actually that really nicely leads on to my freebie and my freebie is from Stone Street Stitchworks and it's called the Great Pumpkin Mini Sampler and it looks I'll just hold that up there it looks like that actually I don't need to I'll just hold it like that so you've got this beautiful sampler with the black middle which I really like you could leave it off if you wanted but I really like that black middle I think that's probably what first attracted me to it and then it's got a pumpkin in the middle but The, there are lots of variations of this chart, which automatically I think is amazing. So I'm going to have to hold this one back a little bit further because these are the actual charts. And although it's a freebie chart, I want you to go and visit them and grab it from them. So what they've done is they have, and you can see on this one, done some alternatives. So it's basically the same layout, same border, but some different colour combinations. And there... That one has got a cat in the middle. The one at the top there has got an acorn. This one here has got like a quilt star, which is lovely. And then there is that option, the one at the top with the kind of Christmassy one with the Christmas tree. You could even change that to be green in the middle. You could do all sorts of things with that. And then a little bumblebee. Do like my bumblebees and then two others simple one with a heart and then one with a uh, not a Union Jack sorry the American flag in the in there as well so sort of one chart and there must be another one as well because there must actually be the pattern for the one with the pumpkin on so one chart one chart idea and six or seven different variations now you could, without any bother at all, substitute, stitch this up and then see which what you've got left there. And there's loads of little motifs on samplers, isn't there, that you could just pop in that gap. So, beautifully done. And in terms of sort of personalising these, when you've got an alphabet like this, I know lots of stitchers will colour their initials in a different colour or the initials of the person that the the uh, little pin keep or whatever it is they're stitching represents or for example mine because my initials are MB 
if I just colour them different colours, they're the wrong way around in the alphabet. So what I do sometimes is just have a little bit of a rejig and I actually will stitch the M where the B is and the B where the M is and just do that little bit of a personalisation there. But these are lovely. You could make that into uh, a little pillow. You could make it into the front of a needle book. Um, it's big enough actually, you could probably make the whole thing into a needle book and fold it in the middle. So there's loads and loads of possibilities there. So again, Stone Street Stitch Works, the Great Pumpkin Mini Sampler. And it's got lots of alternatives. So I will put that down below and you can go and grab that one for yourself. I'm really glad that the comments have been really positive about the freebies, that um, people have enjoyed enjoyed them and sometimes when I read the comments people are saying oh thank you for the freebies and things like that it's not me it's not me the designers are doing all of these fabulous freebies and just helping to make sure that people know where they are um, because there's there's so many right so we've done advent we've done freebie so that leaves two past two past finishes now the first one I'm going to show you, I have shown you fairly recently, but I picked this one um, as one of my finishes from the last 12 months to show today because um, my friend Karen asked a question about it. Now Karen's been buying my project bags and we've been to and fro in on, um, on Instagram for quite some time now and she asked me what the sampler was um, on the wall and another lady actually answered for me before I could get on to get on to answer it which was fabulous um, everybody helping one another out there so she'd asked me about this one and I'm sorry it's gonna have a bit of a a bit of a glare there so this is Harriet Elizabeth Co by uh, Brenda Gervais with their needle and thread I think I'm sure it is and then, see, I didn't reply to my own comment. I should have really replied and then I would have known for death now. If it's not, I'll put it across the bottom, but I'm pretty sure it is. Um, and it is stitched in the called for flosses on a 28 count mystery linen. I'm really not entirely sure what this is. And I started and finished this in February this year because Michelle Farm Girl, before she moved over onto her Patreon, um, platform she started this as a, as a sal on YouTube and so I already had the chart just by chance and so I started stitching it then and I loved it so much it took me about two weeks to stitch so all of the A's B's C's those alphabets that's what they're called are all in eyelet stitch this along here this band should have been in eyelet stitch but I was sick to the back teeth of eyelet stitch by then so they're just in Smyrna crosses and Everything else is just in full crosses. This, there's a little bit of over one at the bottom here. A little bit of over one, sorry, you're getting the, the glare of my light. I've actually got my stitching light with the ring and the magnifier turned up so that it's giving me a bit of a more natural light rather than this um, light bulb that's in this room it's one of those daylight saving bulbs I had to turn it on like three hours ago just to get it bright so there is that one Harriet Elizabeth Co and I really really liked this one it's not a massive sampler and I got it framed at Castle Dart Supplies with glass which I was in two minds about doing and think if I were to do it again now I wouldn't have it with glass and I'm in two minds about having about taking a glass off open it up and taking the glass off just because of the glare I didn't have the um, anti-glare museum glass put on it because frankly it's it's big bucks I think um, and I really like to see the stitching so I'm tempted I am tempted to, to take the glass off that so that's my first previous finish now my second previous finish, and then I'll show you my Victorian motto. Some people have asked me about this one because it usually hangs up on this wall so you can just about see it. And it is called The North Wind by Silver Creek. So let me just, Silver Creek samplers, let me just start at the top. So this is a 
like a quilt hanger that I bought from Etsy. I'll see if I can link the shop below. She only had a couple of them left, so um, I'll see if I can link the shop below. And then this is on 28 count Whisper Grey Zweigart. So it's not really grey. It's sort of a grey, browny, bluey. It's a really nice colour actually. I really enjoyed stitching this. And I started it in 2018. Cavalierly put the date of 2019 to finish it. And then I finished it this year during Mania. Um, it was one of my things that I wanted to finish during Mania. So um, 2019 staying. I'm not picking it apart. Um, this was my first ever project using Evenweave. Um, doing two over two. And I really loved it. Don't get me wrong, I started it and then it, I put it down for ages, um, as you can tell by the time frame. But I really, really enjoyed doing it. And that's the back. So it's just got a padded, it's um, got some, oh, a, some padding in the middle. And then all I've done is just run like a, a seam stitch around the outside and hung it on this bit at the top. That one was a bit wonky there, but never mind. So... Yeah, I really, really like doing it on this fabric. And the reason I stopped, actually, and if you've seen the interview that Becca from Sanbury Stitches did with me, um, what happened, I was using a Q-snap, and my Q-snap, where is it? There. My Q-snap actually caught the top thread when I was taking the Q-snap off. Now, I'm sure that it was probably me being really cack handed and a bit uh, a bit overly violent with it but when I when I slid the oh, those things that you put on the outside the clamp when I slid the camp the clamp off it just sheared through the top and I carried on using Q-snaps for a little bit after that because I preferred them to hoops at the time but I was never even putting wadding and something on I was never a hundred percent confident with them again and then I stopped using a hoop as well so I started stitching in hand using the full cross method uh, the sewing method but using full crosses but it just so happened that the, the damage landed somewhere where it really wasn't too noticeable unless you know it's there and unless you get really close up to it so that is Silver Creek Samplers North Wind that's my second other finish and then all that remains today is, I know that a lot of you will be very excited to, to see this and flash my dress. This is my Victoria Motto Sampler Club. So I get a fat quarter and six threads every month and I have it delivered every other month. So I pay for a fat quarter and six Victoria Motto threads and half postage every month and then I get get it posted every two months um, and I was getting a bit worried about this one I have to say um, but fair play it has arrived so I saw these um, linens and I think that one of them may well end up being used for the EF sampler I think it's just the right colour but we shall see so I get 36 count so actually I don't think I need the board for that one this is a 36 count neutral. There we go. 36 count neutral. And I have also got a 36 count sand, which is there. Now, probably in this terrible light, they look identical, I think. Um, let me see if putting it on a white background helps any. So the sand is definitely a more kind of browny tone, whereas, ah, there you go, before it sort of equalised out there, this one, which was the neutral, has got more of a yellow, more of a yellow tone to it. So, yeah, that might even actually be EF Sampler on the sand and Ballywick on the neutral and then 
this is the floss club so I get the primitive colours and this is the straight out of the pack so these have made their their way from the states so lavender sachet rusty coral mocha rum fog purple plaid it's quite purpley ones in this one harvesting basket Dried cherry, wild berry medley. Oh, let's keep going. Heather, pilgrim squash, autumn weave, and then the last one, hearth and home. Michelle, what are you doing? Hearth and home. So what I will be doing with these is sitting down with my Anne Morrison sampler from Traditional Stitches and seeing which of these colours I want to use in Anne Morrison and then sorting out the rest because this weekend coming, the Saturday I believe, is the start date for that stitch along. So um, I'm excited about that. So no doubt on Saturday I'll show you show you her, and maybe on Sunday I'll show you my, my start on her. But yeah, I'm so glad those have arrived. Anyway, I am gonna leave you now. Now, my partner has always said to me, what's your, you know, how do you finish these videos? And I said, I just say cheerio and wave. And he is obsessed with, um, with Ron, I think it's Ron Burgundy. So he suggests I should say, stay classy stitches. So just for him, stay classy stitches. Take care, see you tomorrow.